guys welcome back to my channel this is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today we will be making a 9 by 12 envelope junk journal cover and this is for my teddy bear junk journals that I have been making slowly my daughter was home the past month so I haven't been doing a lot of crafting I've been doing enough to put up videos but as far as doing my full junk journals and all that for my Etsy shop I've been slowly just working on bits and pieces and so I wanted to show you how I do this kind of cover. I used a 9 by 12 envelope like I said and I used a white one because I didn't like the manila color for this and then I tea, I tea dyed it so it would kind of look vintagey and it's not real dark but you can see a little bit of the tea dyeing. But I loved this cover and I had never made a cover using the envelope and I know it's been done before on other channels but I just think it's really cool because you can have your automatic pocket here and if you wanted to on the other side if you left this I sewed it all the way around except for this end of it so I can't use you know like the other side as a pocket but you could do that you could leave the top open or the side sorry my voice is kind of going here so anyway what I did with this was I took the envelope I tea dyed it and then I sewed fabric I glued the fabric on first just so it wasn't like coming away from the paper and then um, sewed the fabric on and it's on both sides and then I layered up stuff on the front here. I made this a little pocket with this really cute little tag there. And I made a charm dangle here with a little tassel. And if you want to see how I made this, I do have a tutorial on it. And I will put the link down for it below. And then on the front here, I put a fabric flower that I made. I also have a tutorial on that and that will be in the link down below and then I layered burlap and paper and then this image from that was from a teddy bear book that I found and then on the inside I have two little pockets that I sewed in and these were also book pages and then I did some little fabric scrap sewing here for some detail so this is all ready to put one signature in here and I will have a follow-up video for this on how I pick my pages and sewing on the pages all the little details and um, embellishments and things like that so if you want to see me and learn how to make this cover just follow on in this video and let's see what we need to make this project all right what you need is a 9 by 12 envelope mine was white and I tea dyed it you need some scrapbook paper or book pages. I cut these up. These were book pages and these are going to be my inside pockets. This, pa this piece was for the little flap on the inside here. That's a scrapbook paper. I have some just some cardstock to mount my image on the front with. I have my book page image here of the teddy bear. I have some burlap. And then I have some vintage fabric. I cut a piece the size of my envelope. And then I also cut two strips of like about an inch and a half. And this is the full width of my fabric. I think it was probably 48 inches. And I cut two strips of that because I'm, it's not double sided. So I just put them together like this and sew zigzag on both sides to make the straps to go around the book to tie the book together and then I have some little scraps here they're about a half an inch wide and probably about maybe 10 inches long and that's what I use to do the detailing on the pockets and then I have my flower for the front and then my charm tassel dangle here for the side of the journal cover and then other things you will need are scissors, some ink, and some glue. And then 
a sewing machine or you can just glue everything down but I think the sewing machine really adds a lot of detail it's just really up to what what up to you what you have uh, available to you to work with so all right so the first thing we want to do here let me get this stuff separated out here first thing you're going to do is fold your envelope in half and then you're going to take your fabric and as I said it's I just laid my envelope down on my fabric and cut around and it's the size you can leave it a little bit more around on the sides if you want to pull some strings out to make it a little bit rough around the edges but that's basically it it's the size of the envelope and so what I did was I glued glued it all down so just put tacky glue I started on one side and put it down and then I just took my finger and swiped it so it was a smooth surface of glue and it's all over the all over so there's you know it has all that surface to adhere when you put the fabric down and you don't get the you don't see the texture of the glue through the fabric all right And then just smooth it down with your hands, press it down in, make sure it, it sticks there. And now I'm going to do the other side. like that and then just go ahead and smooth it down on this side Alright, now what I'm going to do is go on over to my sewing machine. And if you're interested in knowing my sewing machine, I have a brother and it's the Project One Way Brother, the limited edition, and I bought mine at Walmart. I'm not sure if it's still available, but I will look it up and see um, and have a link possibly if I can find this one. But I really love it. It's an inexpensive one. I think it was at the most it was 150 I think maybe it was even under $100 but it has many like a hundred different stitches on it and it has like a digital size and everything to change so um, and I just use a standard needle and just regular thread it doesn't have to be anything special so let's go over to the sewing machine and we'll do some stitching on here now what you want to do is find the end that has your flap and go ahead and open that up because you don't want to sew that down I made that mistake already and I'm just gonna start over here and I have mine set to a number four and it's a zigzag stitch which is the widest one and I'm gonna set it as far as I can to a number five width. So that just makes it a big fat stitch or it, you know, a longer stitch. And then I'm just gonna start by sewing it and I'll go around the edge and go all the way around except for the top of course where 
the envelope opening is because that's um, where you're going to be able to use that as a pocket. All right, the next thing we're going to work on is the image. And I had this image that was from a teddy bear book that I had found at the thrift store. I just um, trimmed it down and I'm going to use my Distress Ink around the edges. And then with, I'm going to mat it, actually sew it and make it a pocket. But before I do that, I want to tear the edges of this paper. I'm going to take my Distress Ink and just ink around the edges of this as well. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine now and just sew around here making a pocket at the top. I also am going to take my two little pockets here. Um, these are probably about five and a half inch wide by four inches tall. I just made them smaller than the actual size of my cover and I cut them from a book page and I'm going to ink up the edges on here but I'm going to take these over to the sewing machine and do a faux stitch on them. Normally I sew pockets directly onto a page but since this is an envelope and my cover I can't sew through otherwise it would be I wouldn't be able to use this pocket and I don't I want this to be nice and not have like a an additional stitch back there. So I'm not going to sew it onto the back cover either, but I will do a full stitch on here and then just glue it down. And so it still looks like it's stitched, but not really. So let's go over there. Before I leave my sewing machine, I want to add a little bit of detail to these pockets. So I have this strip here, and it's about 10 inches long at a half inch wide. Not perfect at all, and I like it that way. I'm just going to start by pinching it together here, and I'm going to make like a faux gathering. Just put that, pinch it, and then put that under your foot. I'm going to go about right here because I didn't want to, I wanted these to be able to show. So then put your foot down. It's on the zigzag stitch still. Go ahead and pinch another one. And then slowly start your stitch here. And then you'll be pinching it all the way down. And then that just kind of gathers it and it just looks like you know look it adds more texture and just stop and stitch more pinch it again
And then I just trim this off over here. So that just adds really cool little touch to the pocket. I'm going to go ahead and do my other one and I'll be right back. So the next thing we're going to do is finish up our cover. I have a piece of burlap and I have our little teddy bear pocket here. I'm going to glue this down using my tacky glue and then I'm going to trim it a little bit down here. But I just take my tacky glue and go all over the bottom here. Just like that. And I want to trim this down a little bit. And I'm going to kind of do it at an angle at the bottom just to be a little bit different. And I'm going to kind of pull apart some pieces along the side just to give it a little bit rougher texture. This is actually a laminated burlap. It's just easier to cut and it has a surface to glue down. All right, pull a couple more up the top here. So now I'm just gonna glue this down to the front of my cover. like that and now I have this flower here that I made and if you want to see again I have the link down below for the tutorial for these I'm just gonna put tacky glue on here you could use hot glue as well if you would like and that'll go down at the bottom And then this is ready for a little pocket here that will fit in there. Really cute. And then the last thing I'm going to do on here is use my hole punch. I have this crocodile, and I'm going to use the smallest hole here. And I'm going to punch two holes on the side. And this is to hang the charm. And then my charm has this little lobster clasp. So I'll just put this through here. Just like that and then let's go on to the inside we'll put our pockets so I'm just gonna glue those down and just put glue on the three sides
I'm just going to cover this with some scrapbook paper. This is probably about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter. You just have to make it smaller than the actual flap. So I cut a strip and then I'm just going to line it up here, trim off, and just kind of trim it at an angle, the shape of the envelope. I'm just freehanding this, as you can tell. <laughs> And I'm going to take my ink and just ink around here. Oops. Ooh. Ah. Guys, I ran out of storage, so I had to delete some stuff off my phone. But I went ahead and inked it and glued it down. So there's the inside of our cover. And the last thing we need to do now is sew our two pieces of fabric. It's about an inch and a half wide and it is the length of a fold of fabric so I believe this is probably 48 inches so I'm going to pull this over to my sewing machine and we'll finish up the journal cover so I'm just putting the two ends of my fabric together here if you wanted to pin this you could but I'm just going to keep it together as I go. I find it's faster for me that way. And I'm going to do my same zigzag stitch all the way down and around and on the other side. guys so here's the final cover I think it turned out so super cute I hope you come back for the next installment of my junk journal teddy bear style I will be doing my pages on the inside and showing you how to do a pamphlet stitch uh, to tie this all together so here's the final I usually just pull it to about a foot over there and then I wrap this around and just double knot it. And I think it turns out so cute. I love it. If you want his little head to peek through, you could do that. Pull it down a little bit. So cute. I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment and subscribe. Be back for more of my teddy bear junk journal videos and also come back tomorrow for the June installment of the Pinspiration Collaboration here on YouTube. I'll see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.